you can handle this pile, Dominic? <laughs> <laughs> That's no definitely... No way. <laughs> they move by uh, capillary action. Capillary action is kind of like um, adding uh, like hydraulics almost. They have no bones. They basically pump pressure through their body. They pump liquids through their body at, in, in um, sequence, like hydraulic little... Uh, yeah, little like little hydraulic, hydraulic pumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they push, they actually suck air into their body as well and then push it back out of their. Pull, then stretch, then pull, then stretch. Oh, mm -hmm. like a spring. Like a spring, almost more so. But what they're doing is they're pumping liquid in air and then pushing it out and then pumping it in and pushing it out. Okay, this is a coconut husk right here. The coconut fiber. They really love that. You can see how they just eat that right into dirt almost instantly. Wow. That's, in that, that's why we're using so much coconut around. They sort of like things that give them shelter too, like a little nest thing in the soil. Uh -huh. uh, like a, if an eggshell is there, they might accumulate in that. Uh, two months, that's this so whole much. entire thing of newspaper will be like this. But not only that, we'll have built up two bins in exponential numbers. As we keep doing this, that's how we're going to build all of our dirt for our garden beds. This is what our garden beds are going to be filled with, but a stage past this when it actually gets to that. So it's basically new dirt made out of stuff that they've eaten. And they've uh, put all their uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria and everything that's good in them that they carry around naturally. When you put that in your garden, do you want to put it more on top or mix it in a little? Uh, I like to lay this in my garden and throw grass on top of it. Just like you see that pile over there. Dig a little mound, throw some grass, throw them right in there, maybe even a little wet newspaper to give them a little extra something to hold new, uh, nutrients, and then cover it with grass, and then they'll just do their thing underneath there and keep it wet all the time, and then occasionally come bury some food in it. And they'll just eat the food that you bury in it. You can see like a baby one. Yeah, you see the baby one there? Yeah. This is the last time. These are babies guaranteed that were born right here. Oh, wow. Cool. Cool. Susie's asking how do they eat? Um, they have a mouth on one end and a butt on the other. <laughs> <laughs> and they basically dig a hole and they eat. And everything in that hole in front of them passes through their body. Now what's unique about a worm is he has a bacteria that lives in his stomach. That bacteria that lives in his stomach has almost every mineral that we know of on the planet. It has uh, beneficial bacteria, it has um, uh, nitrogen fixing agents into it, which means that it fixes nitrogen into the soil. Um, so as they eat their way through a solid block of dirt, it all passes through their body. They take it up to the surface and poop it out. So that means they're taking all those minerals and they're taking all that dirt and they're replacing back in that tunnel. As they go behind them in the tunnel, they're pooping. And they're pooping actually that same soil mixed with organic matter um, with all sorts of different interesting bacteria out of their stomach that helps to condition the soil. There's another little baby worm. <laughs> cool, well, you can feel free to throw those babies right into here if you'd like. <laughs> oh, you don't want to touch him. Oh, I don't like touch him. I get the stink no job, huh? <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I do not necessarily like sticking my hand in stinky stuff either. But this is for the benefit of gardening. Avocado oh, seed. Oh, avocado seed. Wow, look at that worm right there. They won't eat the avocado oh. seeds unless the avocado seed dies. But it really, most avocado seeds uh, sprout in the bin. This was actually dead avocado seed. A lot of those Haas avocados you get from the mainland, those seeds won't sprout because <clears throat> before they bring them to Hawaii, they radiate them. Mm. And they bring them out of Mexico, they actually treat them with radiation. Mm. And it kills everything in them. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no labeling to tell us what's been treated with radiation or not. But the fact that you can't grow any of those avocado seeds is a pretty good sign that they've been treated. Uh -huh. Like the little Haas avocados, the ones from California and Mexico. Yeah. Where if you throw any kind of a local avocado seed in here, you can't stop it from sprouting. So how come they only eat dead stuff? Um, because that's their role. That's they eat detritus. Their role is to yeah. recycle the living things back into the soil. Okay. So, and they will not touch a living root. They'll only eat dead stuff. That's their job. So everything cool. has a role, it seems, on this planet. Their role is to recycle all the dead stuff so that it can complete the circle and grow live stuff. I've been farming my whole life and fishing and surfing and hunting. So my deal is not about being a scientist, I'm a plagiarizer of nature.
basically, I'll tell you guys that again. I'm copying Mother Nature. I've had 20 years to sit in a valley with a stream next to it and trees growing, watch the leaves falling, watch the worms come up, bring the leaves back into the ground, plant my vegetables there, know it's good and know it works. I've been trying to do the research myself, go through the paperwork, find the scientific material to back up my observations. But basically, I'm a participating observer here. And that's all that I can instill in you guys is observation. So I'm trying to share my observations with you. So some of those questions uh, on a real scientific level, I like it because we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll go study it and we'll figure it. What's that green one there? This one? Yeah. This is called green. a cutworm. And this is another natural little critter that's in the compost pile. And he's chewing up debris as well. And then he'll turn into a cocoon and he'll hatch out as a moth. Oh, but, but as a cutworm, he would eat live stuff. As a cutworm, he would yeah. eat live stuff and he's not necessarily a good bug in the garden. But in our composting area right here, he's not really a bad bug either. There's a give and take situation. I look at them as they still break down material fast. So they're worth the little bit of live roots that they eat as long as they're in the bin. This is Fatita, this type of worm right here. It's a red composting worm. It's known as a manure worm. And I showed you guys some of the others earlier. One of them was uh, Perionyx excavatus, which is the Wymanalo blue, which you don't have that here. And then the bigger one I showed you was called Amnethys gracilis, or a Georgia jumper. That's the other name for it. A lot of people mix them up with African night crawlers. So Fatita. Fatita, Perionyx excavatus, and Amnethys gracilis. Those are the different types. Those are the three that I use. Amnethys gracilis is a deep dweller. Perionyx excavatus is a sub level, just a couple feet. And Fatita is strictly a litter surface worm. Yeah. So my theory is to let them go down the deep ones, bring minerals up to the top, create vertical tunnels. The one uh, excavatus create horizontal tunnels, recycle some of that. And then the Fatita purely excavate on the surface and bring all the stuff they brought up and incorporate it on the surface. So is it important to have all three kinds? I think it is and most vermiculture does not use all three kinds. Most vermiculture uses one type. I don't know of any other systems that actually incorporate more than one type of worm. Uh, sometimes they do naturally because their worm bins will be accessible by the local worms and they'll just crawl right into their systems. On the mainland there's tons of different types of worms that I'm not aware of like on mainland America because uh, we have no natural worm population here. All the worms that are here have been brought here in agricultural products or introduced here. It's actually illegal for us to import worms from the mainland because of soil pathogens that some of the worms have there that may be invasive to our soils here uh, because our soils are so new, comparatively speaking. <laughs> and the reason I use these three is Amnethys gracilis is naturalized. He's found naturally everywhere here already and he's your deep dweller and he's a workhorse. It's the best worm that I know for doing a mass amounts of work. So he's here present already. It's easy to catch him and farm him. He also is farmable in bins as well as outside. He'll migrate in and out of the bins as well as the uh, Fatita and the Perionyx excavatus. They're all farmable in bins. That's why I choose these three and they're basically the only worms we have here in Hawaii. I have found another worm which might even possibly be a native Hawaiian worm they talk about but it gets really big. They're about that long. Oh my god. And they're way deep worms. They make tunnels 20, 30 feet vertical tunnels and you rarely ever see them at the surface. Um, and sometimes those are the ones that you find the little worm castings down by rivers and stuff that they bring up from deep. That stuff goes under the, the soil litter. The top worms come and eat that and cycle it with the organic material. Those guys come back and eat it again after it's had that in it and bring it back down into the tunnels. So they're incorporating it in an up and down fashion. All earthworms are hermaphroditic, both having male and female parts. They can't breed with themselves, but when they breed, they both get pregnant. Cool. You, I bet you ladies all love that, huh? <laughs> I don't think she understood. Just can you explain okay. it one more time? Uh, the worms are neither boys nor girls. They're boys and girls they're both. in one. So it means that when two of them come together, they both make babies. Instead of just mom being pregnant, mom and dad are pregnant. So if that makes any sense. That's much, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> good, so that's good why language. I use this. There's a friend of mine, I'm helping him right now with a farm plan. And he's so used to tilling, I'm trying to explain to him that when we till the soil, okay, this land, if it was left to itself, if, it, if this was a forest and we came in here and we wanted to grow something and we ripped the trees out and we tilled the soil, um, we would basically destroy 
everything that's been accumulating there for hundreds of years, thousands of years, who knows how long. And what that means is tunnels that are permanent tunnels that are 20, 30 feet down that earthworms have made by the millions that affect the pericity of that soil. So that means water penetration, which means that things can live and move dirt around in it and that there can be an exchange.